So in this video, we want to use the shell method to find a volume of revolution when we do an x-axis revolution. So the example that we have says using the shell method, find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by revolving the region bounded by the graph x equals e to the negative y squared and the y-axis about the x-axis. So we have an x-axis revolution over the closed interval, y is an element of the closed interval from 0 to 1. So the region we're talking about, here's, here's the curve e to the negative y squared. Here's that curve. And then the y-axis is going to bound us here. And then we're running from y equals 0 to y equal 1, means this region here that I've outlined in red is the region we're going to rotate around the x-axis to get our solid of revolution. And because we're using the shell method, I need to establish a representative rectangle of revolution. And because it's the shell method, that rectangle will be parallel to the axis of revolution because we're rotating these representative rectangles about the x-axis in order to, to, to create open cylinders or open shells. That's what the shell method is all about. So my representative rectangle will have to be parallel to the axis of revolution when I'm using the shell method. And then right away I look at this and I recognize that these are dy slices. And I need to know two other things. I need to know the radius, sorry, the circumference of revolution. So a circumference is calculated by taking 2 pi times radius. And in the formula, which I've included for you to reference if you want, you get 2 pi times radius. This row of y represents the radius. So 2 pi times radius. So I'm going to need to know my radius row, but I need to know my radius row as a function of y, and I need to know the height of each cylinder. So I'm going to need to know the height of my cylinders also as a function of y because I'm taking dy slices. So I can start to set things up. I need 2 pi times the radius. So what is the radius going to be? Well, I want to recognize that the radius of revolution it's just the y-coordinate. If I establish an xy-coordinate on the curve using my representative rectangle, y is going to be the radius of revolution with respect to the x-axis. So 2 pi times y gives me the circumference of the cylinder I get when I rotate about the x-axis. And then I need to know the height of this and what I want to recognize is that the height is just going to be the x-coordinate with respect to the y-axis. So I could put 2 pi radius to get the circumference times the height of the cylinder is x. But because I have dy slices, I need x as a function of y. But I have that right here. x, which is the height of each cylinder of revolution, is just e to the negative y squared. And then I need to multiply by the width of the cylinder, which is just dy. And then I'm integrating with respect to the y-axis over the closed interval from 0 to 1. So there's my um, <clears throat> integral set up for calculating the volume of revolution using the shell method. I'm going to look at this a couple different ways. So we need to integrate this. So one way to integrate this is to make a smart guess. So 2 pi times, and I want to recognize that the derivative of the exponent on base e is almost showing up out here. The derivative of negative y squared is negative 2y, which is almost what I have sitting out here. So I could probably tweak things by putting a negative sign on and saying I'm going to guess that the antiderivative is just negative pi times e to the negative y squared evaluated from 0 to 1. And then I can kind of check things. Take the derivative of e to the negative y squared. What do you get? The derivative of e to the crap is e to the crap. 
and then we would be multiplying by the deri uh, derivative of the exponent term, so that would be negative 2y. So if we multiply negative 2y times the negative pi that's already sitting there, we see that we get uh, 2 pi times y. We get 2 pi times y. So that checks. So that's one way to uh, anti-differentiate is just to make a guess as to the form of the antiderivative and then check to make sure that your work plays out. The other way we could have played this out, we could go 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1, y e to the negative y squared dy. We could say, look, the derivative of negative y squared is almost what we see out here. So I'm going to do a u substitution. I'm going to let u equal negative y squared. If I do that, then du dy is equal to negative 2y. And doing a little bit of algebra, I would get negative du equals twice y dy. So I would change this to the integral of e to the u, and I would replace the twice y dy, twice y dy, with negative du, and I would still need the pi in front, so negative pi. And then I could say, well, I'm, I'm changing from a y-coordinate system to a u-coordinate system, so I want to change my bounds of integration so I don't have to substitute this back in when I'm done. So if I plug in y equals 0, I find that u also has to be 0. And when I plug in y equal to 1, I get negative 1 squared is negative 1. So when y is 1, u is negative 1. And then recognize that if you change the bounds of integration, so we swap this from negative 1 to 0, we get the opposite of the original integral. So I can lose the negative sign here by changing the bounds of integration and have e to the u du and then integrate. So I'd get pi times the antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u from negative 1 to 0. So I have two different ways of integrating this, one with a u substitution, one by guessing the form of the antiderivative. Now we can finish evaluating this. We get negative pi times e to the plug in the upper bound of integration. So we're going to get negative 1 squared is just negative 1 minus plug in the lower bound of integration, we'll get e to the 0. So this is negative pi times 1 over e minus e to the 0 is 1. Let's go ahead and distribute the 1 into the parentheses, which will just reverse the order of the subtraction. So there's the volume of revolution. <clears throat> over here, I, I would walk through and do the same thing, plug in my upper bound of integration, so we get e to the 0 minus plug in the lower bound of integration, e to the negative 1, and we get pi times e to the 0 as 1 minus, and if we want to write this with the positive exponent, we would write it as 1 over e. So there is the volume of revolution using the shell method with an x-axis revolution.